Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, this is Moshix. Today, uh, I'm going to answer to some of the emails and comments I've received over the last few months. First of all, I want to apologize for having been a little bit out of touch the last couple of months. As I said in my previous videos on where I compared MVS to ZOS, um, I've been extraordinarily busy this summer, and a lot of stuff has happened. Um, but I'm uh, I'm back home. I'm back on my uh, in my home lab and I have all my, my machines here in front of me and so today what I want to look into it um, is uh, answering the question I received which is how do we add more disk devices to our uh, to our MBS environment whether TK4 which is what I usually use or uh, any of the other um, uh, pre-generated images or I know a few people that generate their own MBS images how do, do you add more disk devices um, to to MBS. So um, the the way that I usually do it, first of all, I start. You know, what is it I want to do with this disk device? I know that in my case, I just need a disk device to move some uh, to make a backup of some um, system configuration libraries, like you know maybe Proclib or Parmlib. And so I know I don't need the giant 3390 or a 3380 um, disk device. Um, and let's say that in my case a 3350 disk device is uh, plain enough and so um, that's you know assuming that the 3350s that I want to add uh, there's two ways to, to go about this first of all we need to understand that there is an interplay between um, uh, there's an interplay between several things. On the one hand, there is Hercules, right? Um, and uh, which needs to see files. All it sees is just a file, and it represents that file then virtually as a disk device to MBS. Then inside MBS, there is, and so that goes like this um, to okay, so like this this goes then into MVS now um, and MVS has something called an IO gen uh, can I type today um, which tells it you know, what logical volume goes to which hardware address and, and so from Hercules device address to MVS Iogen configuration there needs to be a perfect match okay I'm working with a foreign keyboard here I'm going nuts um, perfect match so in other words that when Hercules sees a file, you need to tell Hercules, treat this file as device, let's say 250 um, on channel so-and-so device 250. And then you need to actually go into MBS before that and generate a new IO gen, what is called, uh, which tells MBS in, in, in macros where uh, which volumes are sitting on which devices and that perfect match needs to be created by the system programmer now, generating an IO gen on TK4 is not extremely difficult I just did one yesterday again myself on the airplane but it, it, it's not exactly for beginners if you look into the TK4 manual everything is in there and obviously there's a whole chapter uh, dedicated to how to do an MBS IO gen so you can change I uh, device addresses around um, but we're not going to go into that today because that's a little bit of a bigger task maybe I'll make a video about that later uh, today we're just going to use the IO gen that's already in MVS uh, 3.8 in TK4 and just add I know where we're, we're, we're in IO gen there is a provision for more disk devices and we go and, and add it there but for us the understanding that we need to have before continuing is that Hercules is a file, then Hercules will export that file as a particular device um, address and MBS needs to have an IO generate, an IO gen generated which matches exactly 
uh, the devices that Hercules presents to MBS. And if none of that is exactly aligned, nothing will ever work. So having explained that, um, so uh, let's go and, um, and, and start looking at how to go about adding a device. First of all, uh, let's find out where in Hercules we're going to make that device available. So we know that I have a freshly installed MBS uh, 3.8 with TK4 here, update 8. Um, how do we know it's update 8? Well, this line here tells me this is update 8. I just downloaded before I started making this video, so it, it's a fresh install. Um, the other thing I always do is I go to unattended because I need the console access and I go uh, set console mode. Okay, so that do I do have access to the console. A lot of people forget the step and then things become a little more difficult. Always do that. Um, so I have a fresh install of MBS here and now we go into the conf configuration directory and there's one place where we see how all the DASTY devices are uh, configured. Before we go in there, let's just go first actually into the DASTY device. This is, there's actually quite a few um, um, well there's 29 disk devices here. So TK4 already comes with 25, 29 disk devices. If you look at the numbering scheme there is a volume, typically the volume is, is a description in lower characters though however, and then the device address. One thing you'll see immediately is there's no 250. Okay, if I do this, there's no uh, device called 250, which I think this is where I'm going to attach my new uh, disk device. So, just suffice to say, this is how Jurgen, the creator of TK4, numbered his disk devices. The device address uh, after the dot and then the volume before. Since I want to create a volume called Moshix, I think I'm just going to call it Moshix dot whatever device address we choose. So how do we choose a device address? We go to the config directory, look at um, the configuration file, if you bear with me. And one thing I always do is I always change it to two CPUs. I have plenty of CPUs on this laptop and MBS 3.8 works beautifully with two CPUs. So why, you know, why restrict ourselves to only uh, one CPU? Obviously, people will say, purists will say, well, the 380, the 3333 only supported one CPU. Well, you know what? I have a trick here. Uh, I just turn mine <laughs> into a two CPU 3084. Um, and so now I have two CPUs, but this is just besides the point. Now let's go to where all the disk um, images are, or DASTY images. DASTY is IBM speak for Direct Attached Storage Device, which just means disk. Obviously IBM had to invent its own uh, jargon here. Um, and you see that all the 3350s are listed neatly here. They start at 240, 241, and that's it. So what I want to do, oh there's some more 3350s here. What I want to do is attach one more device here and I think I'm going to just call it 0242 3350-DASDY-MOSHIX.242 I think that should work. I'm, I'm doing this for the first time. I actually didn't prepare this uh, before. I've, I've done it in the past, but I did not prepare specifically for this video. All right, so now we added uh, a, you know, the, we told Hercules there's going to be one more file in here um, in, in the DASTY directory called moshix.242 um, and I also added one more CPU to give our MBS a little bit more extra processing power, actually double, almost double the processing power. Let's go in here and let's see if there's anything with a 242, there's nothing. So now comes a very handy command which is we need to add a disk device. We need to create a disk device. A file is just to her. It's just an empty file. There's actually an internal structure with tracks and blocks and, and cylinders. So we need a Hercules utility called DAST in it. Okay. If you just type DAST in it here, you'll see that it tells us 
uh, exactly how to use this uh, device. We can have them compressed, which I always recommend. First of all, it makes everything more portable. You can put it on a memory stick or something. Two, if the file is much smaller, also the access time is going to be smaller. Since the CPUs are much, much faster nowadays than disk devices are, even with my SSD disk here on this machine, I'll make everything compressed and I'll gain, um, I'll, in, uh, I'll gain quite a bit in speed. So the way that we need to do this is dash init uh, minus Z, uh, oh, I mean minus BZ2 for uh, using BZ2 compression. Um, then we call it moshix.1242 because that's what we chose. Um, and then 3350 because this is the device type that I want to use. And then the volume serial that MBS will see, which I'll just call Moshex in this case. So let's make this very clear. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll try to make the fonts here a little bit bigger. Uh, preferences, profiles. Okay. Hmm. How do I make the fonts a little bigger here? I don't have a lot of experience with this. So, the colors are fine. I just wanted to make the fonts a little bigger because we have a couple of readers who sometimes struggle to read the text. And I'm very, very sorry about that. Uh, if I only knew how to make the mm, fonts bigger here, it doesn't tell me. Well, I hope you can all read this. I'm going to have this on very high quality when I upload it to YouTube. Anyway, so this command, that's the init minus BZ2, which is something I have to put in to have it compressed, which we do want. The file name of the logical file on my computer here is going to be moshix242 to use the same convention of all the other 29 disks. The disk type here is obviously very important, right? So we call this 3350 and the volume serial that MVS will see. We type this and in a heartbeat, we had a 555 cylinders. Um, and so, uh, if you wanted to know uh, uh, how big this is um, in megabytes, um, this should give us about 635 megabytes. Yep. Um, no, I'm sorry, about 317 megabytes on this disk drive, which for me is, is, is enough. So let's go to see if we have this disk device. Uh, should see here Moshix. Yes, here it is, 242. So, um, so since we already added this to the configuration file, all we really need to do at this point is start MVS. Um, and let me see if at device address 242, um, there's a command uh, well, it's, it's you know, MVS already started, so that's attached to terminal at this point, uh, so we, get, we can get things working. Uh, MVS has come up. I don't see any problem with uh, MVS coming up at this time, and we're just waiting for MVS to start. Let's see what's going on here. Just two has come up. Yep. So, yeah, and we're in. So, I just started a brand new um, TK4 here with MBS 3.8. Let's log in. Oops. Oops, now you know which recording software I use. Okay, so now um, we have in here, and uh, the way that we can see all our disk devices is the U online. Uh, oops, this is all going a little bit too fast. 
um, this is all going a little bit too fast so let's just um, see if if a device let's vary 242 first of all offline 242 offline let's see what MES tells us mm -hmm. well, it thinks it is already 242 online let's see what it says yeah so you can actually see device 242 that's for sure and now the f so now that that MBS is aware there's device 242 uh, it can still not use it the first the next step now in making this device usable and useful to MBS 3.8 is we need to format it seven like when in Linux you need to format a new disk or new partition or in Windows there's a formatting program I guess um, we need to do the same thing with MBS so the way to do this is first of all we need to uh, turn this device offline you cannot format it if it's online okay and then um, we need to stop start the DL location okay um, and you see when you stop the allocation it sees that um, there is a uh, device 242 MBS is very much aware of this device already it's it's offline so first you vary 242 offline then you start the allocation and now we need to go in and run the formatting for this device the way to do this is um, I have a little um, JCL script here which I can make available um, that does all that uh, but again remember the disk device needs to be offline so I have a job here which runs ICK, ICKDSF which is the formatting utility provided by IBM um, and all it needs is you know obviously a region size um, okay and then we need to tell it there's a system card it has a parameter card unit address we tell it 242 no verify volume ID is Moshix owner let's say Hercules and um, and then we tell it uh, how many tracks to allocate for the VTOC the VTOC is like the directory uh, for this um, for this volume let's say we, uh, we allocate 40 tracks of um, of um, how many tracks to allocate for the VTOC. The VTOC is the virtual table of contents or something like that. Um, so, um, you know, and then you need to tell it where the other parameters is where to place those 40 tracks. I usually place it in track number one at the very beginning. In the old days, you would try to sometimes place it in the middle of the disk because this is the VTOC is going to be seeked very often by MVS. And so having in the disk will make sure that you have on average just a half of the seek time for the arm to move from either extreme of the disk to the middle uh, but since this is all virtual here it's okay to put it in one um, and uh, you cannot put it in one because zero is where the volume serial is going to be is going to be put um, so and I make this message class H so we can go look at it in this pool uh, queues and I think this should run let's execute it um, yes, and so now obviously um, reply U to alter volume 242 contents. So this is an additional precaution MVS has. It wants us to reply. Do you really want to continue? So we say RR comma U to continue. Okay, and this should be it now. Let's go see the output. Um, this was job number two okay so reply this is what we just saw here just two will actually put the console dialog in there and oh something was wrong here return code 12 uh, allocated to sysprint let's go unit address no verify two for being processed logical device 3350 which is correct IO error occurred in device 242 alternate track uh, function term condition code is 12 maximum condition code was 12 
No defective alternate tracks were found. The following tracks are unrecoverable. Oh, okay. So I found some tracks which cannot be recovered. I've seen this before. I think it's because it's, an, it's a virtual disc. Um, and I think it is actually uh, not a real problem. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a problem. Let's see. Now, the next step is to go, before we can go into the volume and copy stuff in there, we first need to turn it online again. How do this? Very. 242 online. Okay, so 242 is now online. And then we need to mount it. And so we do that with 242 mount volume equals standard label, comma, uh, Moshix. We use and then we say um, private so that MBS doesn't use it as temporary storage uh, if you pu put public there's three weak things you can put here in use public which means um, that public uh, it will be used by MBS whenever you you know when you execute jobs and just who needs creates temporary data sets uh, then there is storage which I don't quite remember anymore what that is and then there's private which is you have to tell it to put stuff there and MBS will not put stuff there automatically. Pub 000, Pub 001, those disk devices are public. Um, we'll make mine private. Okay, so it mounted. Uh, now we should be able to go in here. If nothing went terribly wrong, I would be surprised. And volume cannot be accessed. Something did go wrong, um, although it did mount. Um, I'm not quite sure. Volume cannot be accessed. Why can the volume, all the others work? If I put in Mockix, then the volume cannot be accessed. So actually, the formatting did have a problem. Um, so uh, let's see here what went wrong uh, because I done this in the past um, so it should just be ICK device type well maybe we need to put it um, maybe we need to put in here um, some more stuff. Um, maybe I'm just searching here. I might call it in my. Uh, oh, I think I know what is wrong. Let me go back here. So the first of all, let's volume. Let's try this offline again. Two for two offline. And the unlock. Okay, two for two is now offline, and let's go see here again. Uh, mm -hmm. Volume ID no verify. Unit address two forty two. Um, So that definitely looks good. Um, that, should, that should be just fine. Um, well, in computer science, if nothing works the first time, you try it again, although we'll be still expect a different result. Does this device 242? Uh, let's do dev in it. Dev Attach two for two. And thirty three fifty. So that is already mounted mm, in Hercules. This is a Hercules message. We have it from HHC. And this should then mm, let me see. Okay, 
so let's see here. Two four two is offline. What else is offline? I don't see two four two here. Do you guys see it? It doesn't even show it. So there's something here, even though MVS was able to mount it and um, it may be that device address 242 is, is not the exact um, address here that we need to look into. Um, I'll tell you in a second where we usually uh, um, where the IOGEN um, we can go see what is the IOGEN um, file so that we can know exactly how Jurgen generated um, this IOGEN on this system and, and the way we do it is we go 3.4 one um, and then there needs to be uh, a file called uh, sysgen cntl and that's the iogen so let's here that's exactly how this tk4 has been generated we should have a table here of 3350s uh, and 3350s can be from 242 to 24F. So that's devices that are acceptable for 3350 devices. And then we have 250 to 25F. So this is where 3350s are going to be residing. And I don't know why this doesn't wouldn't work. Because we are straight in there with 242. Um, if I turn... Still don't see my 242 device here. Okay, 242 is now on offline. So hmm, I really wouldn't know here at this point anything other than just try this again. Moshix, no verify. Um, maybe we have too many tracks in there. Let me try this. Oops, 15. Obviously, it wants to have a confirmation. We do here reply 1 U. And this job ended. Let's go look at the output. And we have a return code again of, two, of 12. I guess we'll have to do some research now. Um, the following tracks are unrecoverable. So let's open up the browser and search for this. Hercules, ICK, ICK. Um, PSF, um, another error message, ICK. If we have this error, somebody else must have had the same error. And let's see what, what people say about this. Problems initializing DASTY volumes. Okay, somebody else had the exact same problem. It may be the format uh, bzip2 is not compatible. This could be a problem. Um, Um, two questions. Have this has been invited so not to require a sick days? Well, 
Well, I believe this may be due to the compression. So what we do here is we'll detach, uh, detach 242, okay? And then let's go and create a new device. And call dust in it. And then dust in it. Not compressed. And we call it uh it is Project 242 uh 3350 Project. Uh, let's remove the Project file that exists. Let's try this again. Now let's attach it here again. Attach uh, 242 dash the Project. Okay, so we have this now uh, running. I always cancel this MF MF1. It's really bothering me. Um, I don't really look at it that much. You know the SMF records, and and it's every 30 minutes. Um, usually I remove MF1 from the from the IPL configuration. But anyway, so um, we now do V242 offline. As the alloc. Okay, it's not aware of 242. So now let's go and execute this again. It wants obviously to get confirmation. U. Okay, and job four completed. Let's go check. Start 3.8. Look at this guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought. Return code zero. So this disk is now initialized. It was the compression that was throwing it off. Um, and I think the reason for that is, and I need to apologize to you viewers, um, is that my test in it, and I can prove that which test in it comes from Hercules, Hercules 400, which is somewhat newer than what than the Hercules that Jurgen uses in his TK4. And so there may be a slight incompatibility between my DAST in it and the support that his Hercules has inside TK4. But anyway, so we did now um, format and we have zero return code, which means no defective tracks were found. Volume contains 150 alternate tracks. Uh, VTOG is allocated, 15 tracks, function completed, high condition code was zero. So we now have that available. How do we use it? Um, let's go to 3.4. And let's go to Moshex here. Ah, ah, made a mistake. Oh, uh, we need to turn it on first. Online again, sorry guys. Very 242 online. Okay, now first we need to mount it, obviously. Um, the mount command is something you should really know by heart because you will, you will, uh, use this command again and again and again. Uh, so we do 242, um, then we say volume equals standard label, and then the volume serial, which is Moshex in my case, use private. Okay, now we go here, and there's no data sets found, but the volume can be seen. If I only wanna see uh, info, uh, how do I do? Um, uh, so uh, it is there. Let's just copy something over. So three dot uh, three. Copy. Um, oh, we can just generate a new data set on it. So we call it Moshix YouTube example. Fixed block, 80, uh, physical block size, 3,200, volume, Moshix, 350, allocation, two cylinders, one secondary, and 30 directory blocks. Okay, so now we can go here, 3.4, and 
you can see that my volume matrix has already a data set on it. Uh, we can now go in there and, and edit it. And now we created this volume and it's accessible now. However, the one thing to remember is that if we re-IPL this machine, um, the MVS will see the will see the device but will not mount it for normal everyday use. There's one more step that we need to do and is we need to add it to a uh, system IPL uh, to a Parmlib uh, member called VATLIST, V-A-T-L-S-T, so they will mount it automatically. So we, because we have to issue a mount command here, if you remember this one, mount, we have to do this on our own. So we can f we configure MBS, so we'll always do it on its own without having us to do this manually. Uh, how do we do it? We go to a sys1.parmlib data set, partition data set, and here at the very bottom usually is VATLIS 000. And here we have all the volumes of TK4. So we insert one more, uh, actually to make it, you know, to make it real safe, because you don't want to have errors in here. I repeat this one, and I call it MOSHIX, comma, um, and then there is a way to format this. Um, so column one here through six is the volume serial. Um, then you have the comma seven. Column eight uh, is primarily for resident volumes or for reserved volumes. Um, so in most cases is zero. We, we can put in uh, we can put in a zero here. Uh, then column 10, one character is the attribute, uh, storage is 1, public, uh, and storage is 0, public is 1, and private is 2. Ours is going to be private, so we put it as private. And the idea here is that we can put all our stuff here, and every time we migrate to a different MVS, all we have to copy really is just our, uh, our this little file here, you know, this, uh, we can go look how big it is in a second. Um, let's hear... So this is um, 326 megabytes. So it's not really that big uh, in today's terms. And all we need to do, you know, we can put all our stuff in there. And all we need to copy is this this one um, this one volume, this one file onto a memory stick, or you know, even send it by email if you accept larger attachments, or put it on your Dropbox, and you will always have your stuff wherever you need it. Um, so then 3350 is obviously the the type. Um, we said already 2 is for private, then 3350 is the type. Um, MBS during IPL will probe the device and it will, it, and, you know, during IPL and it will see that this device will contain this volume serial, then it knows what to do with it. Um, uh, then um, we have uh, this and here is in column 21 and this indicates if the operator should be requested to mount the volume um, if it is not found, found during IPL so some because in the old days you would have some disk devices that actually had removable disk um, you know those platters that you would I'm sure you've seen it usually they were white and round you put it in and turn like a quarter of a turn to ma to screw them in um, and so uh, this indicator says if it's not found during IPL, do you want to stop everything? Ask the operator to go and mount it. Um, in most cases, you know, since we don't have removables here, we don't play with that that much. We could, but we're not. Uh, we're going to put an N for no. So if it's not present, continue with IPL. And then I'm just going to call it Moshix private stuff. Um, so that's about it. That's all we need. And, and then we, set, you know, always make sure that. You have no errors here. Everything should be perfectly aligned. Zero, two for private, 3350, no. And then from column 23 to 71, you can put in any comments. Um, uh, so that's all there really is to it. We save that. And um, we could try it now. We can shut down and then, you know, we can make this final test of this. Uh, just for you guys to be uh, off here, and then we do here 
f bsp pilot shut fast let's shut it down tcas in one of the um, upcoming videos i'll start to look into a little bit what is tcas i got some questions about what is tcas what is tcan uh, and what is vtam um, so in our case here uh, vtam is called net and we don't have tcam here even though there are some systems where you have well you know tp here it is we have in this case we have v vtam and tcam working in the same system which you can you know ibm expressly in 70 when they introduced vtam in 74 and then significantly upgraded in 75 they made it so the vtam could coexist with tcam and what is the difference between tcam and vtam well i'm going to go this in a future video but while we wait for this to shut down in the beginning when um teleprocessing started to come up and people started to connect stuff through switch lines or through uh, lease lines um, MBS needed to have a way to um, to access those. In the beginning, there was an access protocol called BTAM, which was basic telecommunication access method. method. Um, it wasn't very good. Uh, they only had, as far as I remember, only 276 bytes buffer, which is ridiculous. For a whole mainframe, you had 276 bytes buffer for all lines. Then they then they released in 71 TCAM, which had, if I'm not mistaken, up to, I think it had about up to 300 kilobytes of buffer, and you could even buffer onto disk devices or in storage. And then 74, I mean, released VTAM, which uh, was able to work with the 3705, and then later that unit was upgraded to 3745, uh, which is a telecommunication processor. It's just a processor that all it does is control lines, and so all that processing was offloaded from the mainframe to that device. And you needed VTAM to talk to NCP, the operating system on that device. And then TCAM became mostly just for locally attached devices, but both can coexist. But we'll get into that much, much later. I don't want to burden you too much. I'm just talking here while everything is shutting down. Um, yeah, so you can see here, this is VTAM. IST, that's always VTAM. Okay, IST messages are VTAM. HASP, as you know, is just two. Um, Okay, TP ended, so TCAM closed down, IED, that's TCAM, uh, we should be almost done with shutdown, yeah, VTAM is still trying to shut down, VTAM can tell sometimes it takes quite a, take, take quite a while to shut down, but we're almost there, um, and uh, while we wait for this to happen, let me make sure that uh, everything is fine here. It's almost six o'clock. I'm jet lagged. I just came back from Europe. So, um, all right, all VTEM, all available functions complete. Uh, this is HASP. So, net VTEM ended. VTEM is now inactive. IST 102I, that's the message that every mainframe knows. Uh, and HASP 099 is another good message, meaning that, um, that it's done. Uh, processing, we only have JS2. Now comes something that I'm really not very happy about in TK4, which is JS2 very often just refuses to shut down. And um, if I do, a, you know, JS2 end, um, okay, yes, so JS2 ended with my command P JS2, dollar P JS2 end, JS2 ended. And now we can do and quiet the system, and we can quit here. Now, let's see if it, you know, very quickly if it comes back up again. Let's reconnect our terminal. Okay. If everything goes well, we go into uh, option 3.4 of RFE, and in there, if we look at the contents of volume MOSHIX, we should see something called YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. I remember, I, I forget right now how I called it, but um, this should be right there. Um, Dynal lock is now going to start. I really sometimes debate with myself um, if we need this Dynamask thing here 
takes a while to start. It's a caching, um, but um, it's on the CBT tape. We need to, one of the future videos, we're going to go into the CB tape because CB tape is a website uh, maintained by a guy called Sand Gollop. And there is, it's a couple of DASDI devices full, choked full of hundreds and hundreds of extremely useful utilities. And if you're really serious about doing MBS, you should download the CBT volumes from Jurgen's TK4 website. Um, then you can just copy those volumes into the DASTI directory. And if they're present, um, TK4 and MBS will come up and then you can start browsing those. Um, I can show you how to do this real quick while we start. TK4 MBS page. Um, if you go in here, there is a part where you can download. Yeah, this one. So if you download this zip file, it will contain a couple of volumes. See, optional CBT DASD. And you also have the optional source DASD with all the source for MBS 3.8, which is extremely interesting uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, while this is downloading, it's going to take a couple of more seconds. While this is downloading, let's go see what happened here with our Moshix uh, volume. Go in here, 3.4. And yep, yeah, sure enough, it's mounted. All right, so um, so there's two. So so this worked. Okay, no more need to do anything here. In fact, we can already start to shut down again. I think we finished the main part of this video. I just wanted to show you how to put the CBT volume with the hundreds of goodies. I mean, there's so much in there. Sometimes from the 70s, sometimes from the 80s. Um, so. Um, let's go up here and uh, and then copy uh, okay so this this was already removed so let's take this guy here and move him into this testy why does this not work well you get the idea so you just unzip him and I don't know something went wrong I must have deleted the file already but uh, you download him um, and then there is some more DASD devices, yeah, small ones, I think they're 3330s. And you move them here, and then there's also a configuration file, which all you have to do is just take it and move it into the conf directory of, of your uh, TK4, and then IPL again, and, and then you can go into CBT000, CBT001, and look at all these utilities. Um, I don't know why this... Um, I didn't go there. Uh, this is really weird. Um, I want to try to make today this make this work. Sorry, guys. Ah, that's the way I am. I need to. I need to know why things don't work. Okay, show me where this is. It's gone. This is very weird. So let's download it again. Sorry, AT&T. I think AT&T is my provider here. Oh, I didn't say save, I said open. I think that's the problem. So that's gonna do it real quick. Um, meanwhile, my, uh, my thing here stopped and quit. So let's do this real quick. Almost there. Sorry for letting you waiting, folks. Almost done with this video. I know you don't like videos longer than 30, 35 minutes, and I understand people have work to do. I know that a lot of people actually make make themselves a cup of coffee, sit down, and watch these videos um, over the weekend. Okay, so now this is this looks better. So let's go in here and uh, copy, download, move TK, 
into MVS here. Um, unzip TK4. Oops. Unzip TK4 CBT. Okay. Replace CBT desk conf. Yes. So if you do this inside the MVS directory, it will automatically uh, put everything in the right place. If you go to DASD, there should be, yeah, you'll see the CBT files are automatically here. And then if you go into the conf, you'll see so the CBT DASD conf also in here. Uh, more CBT. Yeah, and this one is actually going to be used by the TK4. Uh, configuration directory will import this and so um, in this line one more time and then and then get to the end of this video which is start MBS again close all this other stuff um, connect the terminal to it and we know they're called uh, CBT 000, 01020. Yeah, there's three CBT um, tests is in there and they're packed full with goodies. I mean, you really owe it to yourself if you're serious about doing MBS to go look at those CBT because there's so many utilities. Anything that you will want to do has probably been done already in the 70s or at the latest in the 80s. Um, well, I will wait here for MBS to come up. Okay. Yeah. So, Hercules 01, and uh, go to 3.4, CBT 00, bottom cannot be accessed, oh, CBT 00, yeah. And just an example, let's take any random one. Um, and here is some JCL, I don't know what this does. Um, let's take something with a better description. Usually they have a description at the very top of the PDS. Okay, yeah. So we found one here. Notes. On the SPF smoke and mirrors tape, the tape was born of good intention and has been and has much good stuff on it. However, it has the victim to creating share commitments on the part of the same of some employers, which sadly still goes on. So somebody from Hyattsville in Maryland, financial management service for some oh for the US Treasury. Um, I suppose the eventual anonymous contributor can still be obtained from him. Good luck. So he is the anonymous contributor from the U.S. Treasury, and let's see what this does. Yeah. So there is. This is some. Um, obtaining this mo tape. So you know, this is just an example. I don't really know what this all does. It's uh, there's some Rex files here. Uh, I think there's some panels for ISPF since we don't have a fully functioning ISPF yet. There is an ISPF that's that somebody's working on Wally, uh, but it has, still has some bugs. Yeah, so uh, there is so much stuff in there. You know, I spend sometimes whole flights browsing and I discover stuff and I install it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, map of the get main areas used by all SMF exits. I mean, this is something you sometimes use, and here is an assembly program that does that. Um, let's see. Uh, this function cleans up any disabled interrupts, exit left pending, and remains that are in the SK during for the. Yeah, so this is there's some advanced stuff, there's some more trivial stuff, uh, but here it is, it works. And uh, this is all for today, folks. Um, I need to go. Um, it's already. 10 past 6 and I need to go to work. Um, anyway, this is how you mount a, a DASD on, uh, on your TK4 or any MBS for that part. Um, if you sometimes have a type a little bit too fast, just freeze the video and go back and see exactly what I typed. But the main thing is create a DASD file, make it known to your Hercules, then IPL MBS, turn that DASD uh, volume uh, um, offline, then format it with the utility. I will make this utility available um, in the description of this video since uh, uh, this is important um, and it's only just a couple of lines. And then format the, the uh, initialize the disk, then turn it online, mount it, and then put it in the sys1.parmlib vatlist00 member so that it will always automatically be mounted on IPL. 
and that's it and Bob's is your uncle so this is all there is to it uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and uh, don't forget to push, put, uh, press on the like button if you like this particular video and I hope to see you for an upcoming very interesting series I have on debugging on MBS. Thank you very much and have a nice day.